Tom here speaking with uh, Townsend Bell, who has the distinction of being more handsome than almost all of the drivers. Uh, uh, how, what is it like I guess, to be on TV uh, uh, the other day and it's raining and you've got to keep going and going and going? Well, first, let's make one thing clear. I have the distinction of having a full-time makeup crew in a talent trailer uh, only for this event. So um, it's fun. It's amazing how fast it goes. You know, you think we're on the air for seven hours for a practice session. What, are, what in the world are we going to talk about? Or a three-hour rain delay. And amazingly, we, ha we have things that we want to say that we don't get in. And uh, it's, it, uh, it's cool how fast it goes. What time did you realize that was going to happen? You were going to be able to get both events done? I think, uh, I think when, the, when the sun popped and we saw this new Doug Bowles likes to call it the penetrant, not a sealant, a penetrant mm -hmm. on the I, racing I surface it. that they invested, uh, I'm sure, a small fortune in applying to the track. And the idea apparently was not only to preserve the existing asphalt, but I think also help um, uh, dry faster. And you could just tell, having been here for many years, just watching how you know sections started to dry pretty quickly. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, we're going to be able to get this thing in. And then we started asking ourselves, okay, uh, the last row shootout, they've already had their little practice session in the morning, but are they going to have a practice session for the Fast 9? And, you know, we were all like, hey, we, they ought to just run them. You know, just, just guys are ready. They, if you're in the Fast 9, you know what you have. So just go make a run. And, and IndyCar, to their credit, just, you know, let's go. Gunslingers, everybody line up. We got it all in. And, and the crazy part was there was so much drama for the last row shootout that nobody had a chance to catch their breath and the fast nine car was going and it was the most action-packed 90 minutes of qualifying that I think this place has ever seen. And it's amazing that the uh, amount of time between the car that's up front and the car that's all the way in the back, what is the two seconds or something? Uh, Kurt would know, it's three and a half, three and a half mile an hour. Yeah. How many feet is that, Kurt? Not much. <laughs> For 10 miles. It's, it's a football field. It's, it's, a football it's field. unbelievable. <laughs> is there any truth to the rumor that um, the McLaren team uh, set their car inadvertently using metric rather than feet and inches, and that's why it didn't go. I've heard that. Is that, is that the case? <laughs> I think they were using... Because uh, they had some borrowed stuff from what? From Andretti and Penske? Yeah. They, what are the sailing terms to measure length? Uh, um, uh, uh, leagues? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, I listen, Fathoms? I, yeah, fathoms. There you go. Uh, they gave it their all, and uh, credit to Fernando Alonso and Zach Brown, the, the CEO for McLaren, to take it on the chin and stand up and say, hey, you know what? We weren't well enough prepared, and we basically got beat straight up. I mean, um, there were some issues that they dealt with, but you go talk to all other 33 or 35 teams that try to qualify for this race, issues for everybody and this is hard this is the biggest race in the world it's tough it should be tough and uh i promise you if mclaren comes back it won't be like that again because they'll learn now with regard to the broadcast did you guys actually do uh practice broadcasts watching video or have they assigned you a specific role when they're up up in the booth obviously you got a lot going on you got an earpiece what's your specific role well, I'm the color commentator along with Paul Tracy. So Lee does the play-by-play, -play, and we react and we analyze and we project what might happen and, and insert our opinions. Um, and, you know, second from that, my job is to make sure that Paul uh, gets a nap during the day, uh, knows what his schedule is to be somewhere on time, um, <laughs> and uh, occasionally find his cell phone and, and car keys. Do you miss uh, being a driver? Well... I race sports cars the rest of the year, but that's kind of like playing in the senior, senior PGA Tour, you know, compared to racing at the Indy 500. I raced here 10 times. I do miss it, but I tell you what I don't miss is the stress of qualifying weekend. I mean, most drivers will tell you that is the most stressful part of the month is those four qualifying laps, or in Fernando's case, you know, the 25 qualifying laps, 20, 20, four qualifying laps or whatever it was that he had to do. Uh, cars on edge. Um, in my case, I never had a backup car. I think once. In 10 Indy 500s, I had one time that I had a backup car, meaning if I wrecked, I'm out. Yeah. And so you got to lay it all on the line. And, you know, I've described uh, uh, qualifying or the race here as different than any other sporting event. The prize is across the way. The difference at Indy is you're going to not run across grass to go get the prize like other sports. You're running across a high wire. It's mm -hmm. a thousand feet in the air. 
Um, the weather may be a factor. I was looking at the hourlies for Sunday, and it looks like maybe some raindrops about 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What The exact start time is what? Eastern time. Oh, 11.46? Is it half an hour later this year? What, what is the yeah. start? 12.40. 12.40? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So and how long does it typically take the race? Three and a half hours. Three. So, so if it rains at 2 o'clock, potentially. You, yeah, yeah, but the, the teams, how many laps do you have to do before they can call it a race and if it's rained out? 100, 101 laps, but I believe they will not start the race unless they know they have a window to get it in. Um, so I saw a tweet or something from Doug Bowles just earlier that says sunsets at 9.03 p.m. And, and he was quoted as saying 6 p.m. is the latest that they think they could start the race. Um, I know from an NBC perspective that uh, we'd, love to, we'd love to get it in, but uh, weather you know, is what it is and, and seems to always factor every year. Do you have some guy at NBC glued to all the radar and on the phone to Terre Haute? And uh, several, yeah, yeah. We're getting several weather updates, and and frankly, most of the network will probably be glued to the weather, trying to you know project uh, where the windows will be. Okay, putting you on the spot, can you give me the top five you think have the best shot? Yeah, Alexander Rossi looked super fierce in practice, um, confident. They haven't made hardly any changes to his car. Uh, brilliant racecraft here the last few years. Simon Pagano riding a wave of momentum. Uh, pole sitter, won the Grand Prix. Uh, career rebound for him. Um, and uh, so he looks very strong. I'd say power, uh, you know, one last year knows what it takes, has, has come full circle on his oval career to, to master these ovals. Ed Carpenter finished second last year, three time pole sitter, uh, hometown kid. Um, that would be huge. Would be huge. So that's one, two, three, four. You know, for my fifth, uh, I'm going to get Cinderella's story. Mm -hmm. Colton heard it. Wow. Age 19? 19. Already a race winner. Uh, great little race team. Yankees ownership. Wow. And great story for IndyCar. And he's, he's fully capable of making it happen. Townsend Bell, NBC Sports. Thanks, Townsend. Thank you, great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.